Hmm, get a tragic here and welcome to Tabletop Simulator. I'm going to be playing Wrath of the Righteous. This is Pathfinder the Adventure Card Game. Now, Wrath of the Righteous is my favourite Pathfinder adventure path. Not so much in the card game, but in the actual RPG itself. It's the only path uh, adventure path in the RPG that I've played right through like all of it and a whole bunch of the variants and little add-on stuff it's awesome i just love the thematic themes of the demons and all that kind of stuff it's right in my wheelhouse now this is going to be a six player game i play six player games and i play pathfinder because that's where it's at yo and also that's at the play account for my family as well so I like to sort of work things out for for that for that level. And Wrath of the Righteous is pretty famous for being badly designed. And by badly designed, I mean that uh, it's one of the most hated of all the paths that people have made. So what tends to happen is it doesn't get played a lot, which I think is a shame because I really like Wrath of the Righteous. Now, I just randomly pick some characters, but because it's so difficult and I want to do a proper campaign, as is I'm going to play through the world wound and then I'm going to go through the adventure path and I want to basically keep the same characters. I don't want to keep swapping out characters. I might have to at some point, but I'm just going to pick some characters that I think might be a good fit. So I've done a bit of a random, but I am going to tool around with it a little bit. For example, I like Hask. But I'm going to put Hask down in this spot here. I really like Balazar. I'm going to put him here. I'll stick Aladdin up here. He's like my main dude. I really want to get uh, Kyra. Yeah, put Kyra down here. I like Crow. We'll stick Crow up here. Uh, who's Shadra? I can't remember who Shadra is. Which one's Shadra again? Do, 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 Ah, oh, right. Yeah, she's the other healer. Uh, maybe we want... Do you want two healers? Yeah, why not? Uh, we'll put... No, we won't. We, I think we want to have another attacker. We'll go with... Uh, who else have we got? Sheila. Yeah, we'll put Sheila. Okay, so in the end, that wasn't actually very, uh, <laughs> that wasn't actually very random, but whatever, that's what I'm doing. So we'll play him, we'll play, uh, Crow. Sheila, Balazar, Kyra, and Hask. Okay, let's get rid of them. Now, we are also going to play with the character out on deck. We're just going to chuck the whole deck in. I don't care about the extra banes. Bammo. So that's that. Oh, what else is in here? Nothing. Yeah. And... I'm also going to play with the promo cards because why not, yo? So just uh, ignore all my modding tools because this mod is in beta. Let's just get rid of all them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're going to use the the uh, the little boons, and these are a bunch of banes. And we'll put them in as well. Why not? And we're also going to use the iconic cards for these characters. Now, the iconic cards, these were basically, they came when you bought, like, the miniatures. They came with a special card. And uh, you can, even though they're sort of fancy, they have an owner on them which means that you can put them in the deck as a basic deck. So what we're going to do, we're just going to 
put these out. So Shalia gets one, Haas gets his little badger, Balasar gets his splendiferous hat, and Crow gets his breaker. Now, there is actually one for everybody, but like I said, these were pretty hard to get, and uh, I got my card images from mods already on the warehouse. I couldn't find the iconic hero cards for every single character when I made the mod. Okay, so let's just get our decks now. So we'll get the default deck, but we'll replace the sickle with the hammer. Uh, we will replace the normal helm, which is here, with her paladin's helm. And I'll replace, I think I'd like to replace the vulture. I think he's got the vulture. Uh, oh, the horse. I'll replace the horse with his badger. Because basically the frog is awesome when uh, doing this thing. Looks like there's an errant... Uh, there's a couple of errant... little snap points that shouldn't be there. I'll just clean them up. Like I said, this mod is still in beta. Okay, and we'll get you, and we'll get you. Okay, so we're now ready to actually run the setup. Your blammo. And we are now ready to go. So our servitor demon for this quest is the Demoling. We have a 30 point timer. We're playing with a full set. So now it's lots of reading time. I'm just gonna read out all the stuff. And like I said, if you uh, if you don't want to uh, watch all this, the first turn will be going up at the same time. There's not gonna be actually any gameplay in this one. Let's have a quick look at our heroes though. We have Alandin, Al Al Aladdin, Alan. I'm terrible with fantasy names. So I just don't even bother. I'm just going to call this guy Alan. So this is Alan. And Alan learned at an early age that his gifts lent themselves equally well to the pursuits of physical prowess and physical pleasure. Since his boring life in a settled house of minor nobility promised him no great quantity of either opportunity, the youth gathered his personal effects and styled himself as a sellsword, willing to dispense death on the battlefield for the right price. Astride his trusty steed Doahan, Alan commands soldiers and serving maids alike with cool authority. <laughs> what a rogue. But not a rogue. Okay, so he has his his main stat is he's charismatic and he's got pretty decent melee. Okay? He's also got not not a bad constitution. He's he's a good all rounder, you know. He only the only thing that really sucks is, is dexterity. I mean, rolling a d6 for intelligence when you've got no real uh, pluses to that is actually not bad. So he's not a bad little guy. Now let's have a look at his power. First, he's proficient in light, heavy, and weapons, and he may discard a card to add one plus its adventure deck number to your check to defeat a non-villain monster. If undefeated, return it to the top of its location deck. Other characters may not play cards or use powers on this check. At the end of the turn, you may recharge any number of weapons. Okay, so pretty cool. It's uh, The second one's actually really strong. It doesn't sound strong, but it's really strong because it allows him to uh, keep his deck refilled and constantly getting his good cards. And what is more interesting is this discard to add plus one to a check. Now, pl adding plus one to a check is a lot better than it sounds. And uh, what is even more important is that it, you can actually place the, the creatures on top of the deck after you, if you fail instead of shuffling them back in so you know exactly what's coming, which means you can move the correct people to the correct areas and stuff. Very, very cool. And he has Doahan, his trusty steed, and basically this allows him to zip around. It's like a super powerful version of the horse ally. Okie dokie. We have Crow. 
Born to a nomadic tribe of horse trainers and sellers, Crow proved he was physically gifted at an early age. Unfortunately, his occasional blackouts, which seems to always coincide with violent outbursts, earned him few friends among his people. After a terrible incident left his family and their horses dead, Crow fled his people in disgrace. Now he fights for coin with a mixture of ferocious weapon strikes and the chaotic magic that seethes in his blood. <laughs> Not the kind of guy you want to go to the pub with. He has excellent strength, a 12 plus 1 for strength. That's awesome. He's got a great constitution. He's actually got a pretty decent wisdom as well and with survival. And he's also pretty charismatic, another very strong hero in my opinion. Let's have a look at his powers. You may bury a card to add 1d10. That is a lot. And the electricity or force trait to your strength melee or arcane check. If the check has the attack check, you may recharge the card instead. So there's a lot going on in this command here, and I'll go into it when I'm actually using it. Uh, but basically, it allows you to add a 1d10 to his strength. So his strength is already a d12. So it's a d12 plus a d10. It's pretty awesome. Okay. His other power is when you defeat a monster, you may move or put the bottom card of your deck on the top of your deck, then end your turn. Very, very cool. Uh, basically, being able to move freely is a really powerful ability because movement is really one of the things that really allows you to do the six-player games better. Okay, what have you got here? Sheila the Paladin. As a starving young orphan, Sheila encountered a paladin and became fascinated by her shining helm. She stole the helmet, an act that led to the paladin's death in a subsequent battle. In the aftermath, the guilt-stricken girl climbed into the holy warrior's prior, only to be saved by the other paladins who took her in and made her one of them. At first, Sheila thought to atone for her deeds, but she has since become a full and devout champion of Iodame, goddess of justice. Io, Midi, whatever. So basically, she's a paladin. Not quite sure how you can be a paladin if you've murdered someone indirectly, but whatever. When you attempt your check, before you act, you may use your charisma still instead of any listed skill. Booyah! When you discard the top card of your deck, add a 1d6 to any check by a character at your location. Pretty damn good, too. So let's have a quick look at her charisma. It's a D10 plus one. So you can just add that to anything. It's awesome. So no matter what it is like, so, oh, you're doing a dexterity? Actually, charisma, baby. Freaking cool. Okay. Now we've got, so get rid of this chat window. How do we get rid of that F5, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Balazar was taken from his family at a young age to fulfill an exotic prophecy. He was now put to work studying magic in an arcane academy. After pulling off too many glorious pranks, his instructors exiled him to the flesh forges and forced him to literally stare into the abyss. As he contemplated his demise, Balazar made contact with Elden, who offered aid in exchange for a solid form. Now Balazar roams the world, learning new things and causing trouble. <laughs> Eildin is an outsider, kind of like a, a demon, I guess. Uh, they sort of get attached to people, whatever. Oh, I forgot to actually put in his uh, Blendiferous helmet. What is that? That's an ally. Uh, yeah, we'll chuck out the vulture. I knew one of them had the vulture. Okay, so... He has all sixes and eight for a knowledge and 10 for charisma, 10 plus two even. Now, he has quite a lot of complicated things going on mixing up with his cohort here. Look at that text box, it's ginormous. I'll get into that during the, t during the turn. Basically, you can add his arcane skill to various checks using this, uh, this little guy here. He has, he's, he's basically got some kind of mind problem, so he can't use attack spells. They just get whapped out of his brain. But he does have all these weird abilities to 
draw monsters from the box and then he can like discard monsters with this guy. He's a cool character. I'll show you him working. He's quite quite a lot going on there. Okay, Kyara. She's one of the famous ones because she is like the go-to healer. She has lower stats in this one than any of the other uh, sets, but she still has the 12 plus 2 Divine Wisdom. Okay, so her powers are, instead of your first exploration on a turn, you may reveal a card that has a Divine Trait to choose a character at your location, shuffle a 1d4 plus 1, random cards from his discard pile back into the deck, then discard the card you revealed. So basically, you can discard a card. I don't know why it says reveal a card and then discard it. I'll have to check that out. There's probably a way you can recharge the card that you're using. Whatever. The point is, you discard a card with the divine trait and you can heal someone. And you don't need to cure a spell or anything like that. And if your combat check has the sword trait, add 2d4 and you may add the magic trait. Pretty awesome. Kyra and her family grew up near a small temple in Serenade. Like I said, I suck at fantasy names. I'm not even going to bother. I'm practically dyslexic, so they're, they're impossible for me. And I could spend 10 minutes trying to pronounce it, but I'm not going to be bothered. <laughs> the Goddess of Healing. Honestly, Redemption and the Sun. Let me, let me start again. Kyra and her family grew up near the small temple of Serenade, the Goddess of Healing. Honesty, Redemption and the Sun. When bandits attacked Kyra's village, Serenity Priestesses defended the innocent, driving off the raiders at the cost of their lives and their sanctuary. Standing in the burned ruin of the temple, young Kyra swore her life and sword arm to the goddess, promising mercy for the deserving and a quick death for those who spread darkness. Yeah, not a lot of tolerance in the Pathfinder universe. Next is Hask, good old Hask. Okay, so Hask, uh, let's have a look at his abilities. When you discard a weapon that has the rain trait for its power, we charge it instead. Pretty awesome. At the end of your turn, you may examine the top card of your location deck. Just very easy to forget that power, but it basically means he always knows what's coming. He's got good eyesight. And you may recharge a card to add 1d4 to a combat check by a character at another location. Now, this is interesting because it used to be that the card you recharged had to have the ranged trait, but it's slightly different in Wrath. You can recharge a card, any card, to give 1d4 to any other character at another location. So basically, he is an awesome character because he kind of can help anybody at any given time. Very cool. But because of that, he's easy to die. Uh, anyway, we'll see how he goes. I like Ask. Okay, so that is the major setup. The Demoling is our servitor. He's immune to electricity and poison, and you have to do a wisdom seven check. Otherwise, the demon uh, cannot be evaded, and also he gets an increased difficulty by three. Pretty awesome. And if you fail at him, you get booted to another location. He teleports you. Very annoying. Uh, what else do we need? Let's have a quick look at the adventure path for more than a hundred years the demon infested world wound has warred against humanity along the border of the lost sarcorus abyssal armies clash with crusaders barbarians and mercenaries yet the city of kenbaris stands defiant demon lords conspire to bring down the last vestiges of resistance sacrificing legions of servitors queen galfrey has sent out the call can heroes seal the world wound? Awesome. That's a, her name is Galfrey. And this guy's ability, this guy's text here, he was forced to, where is it? No, it's, it's Balazar. Forced to stare into the abyss. It's kind of what happened to Doctor Who when he looked into the time vortex and the master went crazy. <laughs> I'm not a geek. You're a geek. Okay. The World Wounds demons would not be so confident about their chances of success without allies hidden among the people they prey upon. The demonologist Safini and several of her Blackfire Adept minions want to bend demons to their will. Show them whose will is the strongest. Ah, uh, demonologists. What are you going to do? Okay, and that is pretty much it. 
So now that we have that, let's have a look at the actual campaign story journal. I might put these in little separate videos uh, as to, to read out. But that's it, we are now set up, we are ready to rumble. It is time to start playing. I will see you guys 